Hello everyone and welcome to Super User Channel. Today's video is about curtain wall door family. We will create a folding door that has at least four folding panels or more within the curtain wall system family. We'll make it parametric family so that we can control the number of panels within the door while keeping the door total opening size divided equally between the panels. The family will have closed panels at the elevation view, but at the plan view it will have a 2D indication of opened panels. But both panels in the elevation and plan view will be linked to each other so they will have the same count and width. Let's start modeling by opening a new door curtain wall family. In the exterior elevation, I'll create an extrusion, which is the panel frame itself. Offset the four edges by 50 mm to create the frame thickness. Then add a dimension and look it at the four sides of the frame. Then I'll go to the plan view and adjust the extrusion end to 50 mm. Centralize the frame with the reference plane. Add a dimension between the reference plane and the frame edge and make it a type parameter to control the plane location. Add a dimension for the frame total thickness and lock it. Back to the elevation view, I'll create another extrusion for the glass panel. In the plan view, I'll adjust the extrusion end to 25 mm. Move the glass panel to centralize it with the frame. Add a dimension for the glass panel total thickness and lock it. Then add a dimension between the two extrusions edge and lock it as well. Now I'll add a new type of parameter for the frame extrusion material and another one for the glass panel. Now since the two main masses in the door family are in the right location and thickness, I'll go back to the elevation view and lock the edges. I'll lock one of the frame side edges to the reference plane. Then lock the frame bottom and top. And lastly, lock the glass panel four edges to the frame inner edges. So far, we created only one panel with no parametric dimension. But now I'll save it and load it to the project to see how it will act in the project environment. In the project file, I've already modeled this curtain wall. I'll change one of its panel to the new door family. As you can see, one end is attached to the curtain wall grid and it's moving with it. Of course, we have a gap at the other side of the panel because we didn't attach any geometry to it. Also, the height of the panel is following the curtain wall full height. I can also assign materials to the door, aluminum for the frame and a glass for the inner panel. Now back to the family to complete modeling. I'll select both the frame and the glass panel extrusion and the click array to copy them. Make sure that the group option is checked and move to second is chosen. Copy it next to the first panel edge, align and lock the two edges together. Also align and lock the horizontal edges together. Select the array and make it parametric. I'll call it panel quantity and check instance. Now I'll add a dimension between the reference planes at the two ends. Add a parameter to it and call it door width. I'll make it instance and reporting. Then in the elevation view, I'll isolate one of the panels. Then inside the frame sketch, I'll add a parameter for the panel width. I'll call it panel width and make it instance. Now we need to add a formula to calculate the panel width, which is the door width value divided by the panel's quantity. Now let's reload it to the project to see how it will act. As you can see, the door total width is following the curtain panel grid from both sides. I'll increase the panel's count to 4 for example. Notice that the panel's width is automatically changed, so the panel's width remain equal. Also, I'll adjust the offset to make the folding door align with the rest of the glass panels within the curtain wall. 
Let's go to the 3D view. Now we have a new error, as the door height is not following the curtain height. Although we have previously locked the top of the panel and it did function correctly in the first time we loaded the family, those type of errors are hard to predict and rivet. That's why it is important to keep loading your family to the project while you are still in the process of creating it, so you can track errors easily. I'll go back to the family to see how we can fix it. I'll pull the reference plane to see if the geometry is following. Now Rivet is giving me an error that the bottom constraint is not satisfied with the top one. Now one explanation for this error is that the geometry is within a group, so Rivet is unable to flex it. So we need a workaround to fix this error. I'll cancel it and inside the group I'll unlock the top constraint. I'll add a dimension between the two reference planes that make it a reporting parameter. I'll call it door height. Now inside the frame sketch, I'll add an instance parameter for the panel height. Then I'll make the panel height equals the door height reporting parameter. Now let's load it to the project. At this point, I'm satisfied with the way the folding door looks in the elevation view. At the end of the video, I'll come back to the elevation view to add indicative arrows for the door folding orientation. But for now, I'll move to create the panel's 2D indication in the plan view. First thing, I'll open a new generic family. Now with model lines, I'll draw a basic rectangular to indicate the single panel in the folding door. I'll lock its thickness to 50 mm. However, I'll make its length parametric one so it can be linked to the door changing width. I'll call it 2D panel width for example. I'll save the family and load it to the curtain wall door family. I'll locate it to the first panel edge. Then I'll align and lock them. Also align and lock the 2D family edge to the reference plane. I'll make its parametric length equal to the parametric panel width of the door family. This means that if we flex the width of the 3D door panels, the length of this 2D rectangle will have the same value. Now the next step is to make the repetition of this generic family parametric in order to follow the 3D panels count. So I'll select it and click away, then shift it 60 mm. Then lock the dimension to the reference plane. Also align and lock the horizontal edges. Select the array, then add a parameter to it. I'll call it 2D panels quantity and make it instance. Now I'll open another generic family, but this time to model the 45 degree angled panels. I'll copy the work we did in the previous generic family, locate it at the reference plane's intersection, and then make sure that all dimensions are locked. Select the whole thing and rotate it 45 degree, then move it to intersect with the reference planes. Then I'll create a mirrored copy of the whole sketch, then make the two panels intersect with each other from the top. Then align and lock the intersection. Select the whole thing and make it a group, then align and lock it with the two reference planes. Now I'll save the family and load it to the door family. Now in the door family, I'll line and lock the angled panels to the horizontal edge of the 3D panel's extrusion. Then add the parametric dimension between the vertical reference plane and the nearest point to the 45 degree panel. I'll call it 45 panel offset and make it instance. As the previous generic family, we will make the 45 degree panel width 
equal to the 3D panel width in the door family. Now we need to add formulas to link these two generic families location and count to the 3D panels. First thing, the two vertical panels array should equal the panel quantity of the 3D panels minus 2, which is the two 45 degree panels. And the side offset of the 45 degree panels should equal the 2D panels quantity multiplied by 60 mm. Let's load the family to the project and test it. Now we can change the number of panels or extend the door total width and the 2D panels will follow the 3D panels count and width. At this point, we are done with the family basic modeling. And now it's up to you to add more details to it. For example, I'll add hidden lines to indicate the door lintel at the plan view. Another detail we can add is the movement orientation arrows on the plane's elevation. I've already created the arrows I want inside a new generic family. Sketch the arrows using model lines in the elevation view. Add the parametric dimension for the arrow's height and width. Now I'll load it to the door family. I'll line and lock it to the panel edge. Then from the elevation view, I'll select it and make its height and width equal to the panel height and width. Then align and lock its edge to the panel edge. Then add it to the array group. One final step is to edit its visibility to make it appears only at the elevation view. I'll do the same for the rest of the 2D families, but this time I'll make them visible only at the plan view. Let's load the final result to the project file. Now it's up to you to change the door proprieties to follow your design. We have full control of the door width, height, and number of folding panels. We are done for this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.